The following program shows real people taken into custody by Dallas SWAT. They are presumed innocent until proven guilty. It takes a special kind of person, I think, to be in SWAT. The risk factor is high. When those bars come off, they're lethal. Heavily armed, heavily barricaded, heavily loaded up on cash and drugs. Captain Emberlin, are you looking for a co-pilot? Yeah. We're taking these young men on an adventure of a lifetime. A little bit of fear keeps you smart. Move, move, move. Glad I'm not a dope dealer in Dallas. Barricade suspect. I love flying and I always, as often as I can, volunteer for the, the aerial surveillance job before these operations. But it's not enjoyable flying, it's, it's, more, it's more work. I'm doing aerial surveillance for an operation we're gonna run. The intel is that there's four suspects at the uh, location, two males, two females. I've been on the SWAT team uh, here in Dallas for about 10 years now. Prior to that, I was a patrol officer. After that, I worked in narcotics undercover and saw the SWAT guys doing their thing. It looked more fun than what I was doing at the time. My original plan was to go to the Air Force Academy and fly in the Air Force like my father, but I had an eye injury that precluded me from pursuing a pilot slot. We go flying fairly often because a lot of these houses don't have alleys behind them. We just can't get to them, and that's where this one is. The helicopter is going to take me up, and we're going to take the pictures so we got some real-time information about what's going on. Y'all ready? Ready to go. Take off. Launch departure for 4 6 eight, just clear. Back on. Video surveillance is important to planning an operation because it allows us to pick up things that we can't get from the street. And we can basically cut up the house and get a general idea about how it looks on the inside from the outside. There's going to be two empty lots, and then the first house on the left is the target house. It's a little small white house with oh, a fence around it. The little white house with the red front, it's mostly white. It's going right off to our left. There's a red car in the backyard. The helicopter pilots know at what altitude they become real obvious to suspects. You got movement in the front yard, I don't get any closer. Low enough to get good tape, but high enough to not alarm anybody. Uh, you got it? Thanks a lot, that was, that was perfect, you got some good tape. Being up in the helicopter today reminds me how much I miss flying, and sometimes it makes me want to start my lessons again. I worked on my private pilot's license for a while, and uh, I think I'm gonna get started doing it again. You should join me. I know, I've always wanted to. I've always wanted to do that. It's been since uh, 1994, since I had my last formal lesson. I've gone flying with friends in the meantime, you know, and they'll teach you things here and there, but my last formal lesson was in 1994. This is everything. Logbook, knee boards. Charts, I'm sure, are all out of date. Yeah, I had about 12 hours when I stopped. It would be just as simple for me to start over with you than to try to pick up where I left off. So you take lessons with me? Yeah, I'd love you to. Think we coordinate that? Yeah. We're going to be assisting narcotics today with the execution of a search warrant. We hit this house about a year ago, so we have some basic intel on what's going on in there. The only problem with hitting the house once before is they're going to beef up their barricades. Wow. 
Video surveillance is important to uh, planning an operation because it allows the guys in the briefing to see this house before they get there. When we go to hit these places now, everybody's seen the place on video from the air and from the ground. That's our target right there. The Out the side of the house with the cages, the cars, uh, the driveway, there's a gate that opens up here to get to the back. There's another fence in the back. So let's talk about the plan, what we're going to do here. So as we pull up in front here, we're going to be led by the APC. The APC will pull in and work its way back to that open gate area there and try to drop that team off in that area so they can get to the Charlie side. We're going to pull the Alpha 1 and the Baker 1 and 2 at the same time, a tri-pull tri here like we did yesterday, and clear these ports out right here. We're pulling the bars off the house because that's, it's a barricade and we need to get past that barricade. So we're gonna go up here with the pry on the cage, get that open, then we'll go into an interior breach of the door here. If we have no hang-ups, we're off and running. If there's some way we encounter a cage on the inside or some fortification on the inside, we will have an alternate entry point, either the Alpha 1 or the Baker 2 window, depending on which one clears the best. Although we're planning breaches on the house, we have a, a primary entry point and a secondary entry point. There's also a plan in place to catch these guys if they come running out of the house before we get there. They've got cameras all along the alpha side of this house, and they're facing the street and the driveway. Bob, Steve, you guys that did most of the planning on this, do you have anything to add? They set up a camera. It's situated right here. It literally faces towards the street, and I bet they can see, like, from this mailbox, the mailbox is right here, all the way down to about this fence line. First time we went, we drove up, we stopped here. The guy immediately comes out the door just that quick. When we pull up, they're going to know why we're there. They spot us from the cameras. There's a real strong possibility they can get this door open and the track meet will be on on the back side before we can actually get our teams in place back here. We also are going to use the helicopter later on today. They're going to come in from the, the west, and we're going to come in from the east and kind of bracket these suspects because we're expecting runners and there's a, a large area out here, you know, a couple acres that they can get lost in. Give us a holler when you roll. Let me know when you're loaded. from here, it'll be about one minute out. Good. 10, 8.40, let me know when you're loaded. We're 8.40, we're loaded. 8.40, Air One, we're gonna move out in a minute. We're going to get Air One up ahead of time as we're making our approach into the location there. And he should have eyes on this structure before we show forth. Okay, 840, fair, good. We're moving, we're moving. Right turn into drive, guys. Driveway's open. Go, 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 go! Okay, guys, bail out. Get that stun in here. Two in custody, right? Two in custody. Good job, Brent. Get on your belly. You guys got weapons on you? Let me know now. You want them over there? Yeah, I'll team up. They got greedy and grabbed their money and dope and uh, started running. Their surveillance equipment tipped them off. So the obstacle we had was four suspects running when we came out and got off the uh, armored car. The door was open, though. I mean, they just left. Four suspects, 20 bags of marijuana, and a big cookie of crack, which means it's just been cooked up. It's the shape of the pan, but his bag hung up on a nail on the fence here. He threw it over, and he was going to climb over the fence and follow it over. But we started to head him off, so he laid down. He's just too big, big husky guy. Narcotics uh, busted these guys a couple of weeks ago nearby in one of the vehicles that's parked in the back. We arrested the guy with this last week. 
And he already got his car back? He's already got his car back. He Was it one of the guys that we had here today? The one that's trying to throw his dope? Right. His pants were too baggy? Couldn't run. <laughs> Bro, this was the one that we popped by the mall. Yeah, yeah, in that red car? Yes. Yeah. That one driving. Yes. It's frustrating to bust the same drug dealer over and over. It's part of the game. I think the uh, video surveillance that we did really helped out. I think the drive-by really helped out. There wasn't a question in anybody's mind when we pulled up what the target was. We got all the suspects, we got all the dope, and we secured the house with no one getting hurt. It takes a special kind of person, I think, to be in SWAT. Uh, you have to put yourself second and the team first. I've been a cop for 24 years, and I've been on the SWAT team for about 14 years. So one of the responsibilities for being some of the more experienced guys in SWAT is you have to train up the younger guys. Is fear an option in tactical operations? Is fear an option? Yes. 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 A little bit of fear keeps you smart. Fire the hole! Fire the hole! Move. Police training in progress! Move, 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 move. Fire. Just like you learn to control your adrenaline, you learn to control that, that little bit of fear that you're feeling. That's where your training comes in. You can test guys in a training environment to see if they can handle the stress, see if they can handle the decision making. Is this room secure, guys? Yes. Are we sure? Look around. Yes. Index, guys, come on in here. You guys are like a fist going to a room. As soon as that fist punches through the doorway, it splays like that. I try to teach the new guys coming over here the same things that I would teach my kids. A fear is a part of life. Be the eyes in the back of the guy's head in front of you. We had a good day of training today. Obviously, there's a lot of work that we need to do. It's a never-ending process. <laughs> Well, it's definitely not an ordinary hit. This is a this is probably the most fortified structure I've seen in a long, long time. Uh, last time this place was hit, um, it was actually done as a ruse where they waited till somebody walked out and popped it, and they got uh, over a kilo of crack out of it, pounds of weed, and several thousand dollars. So it's not your typical crack house. This is one of your larger scale operations. The fortification is unprecedented. There's uh, at least three suspects in here, probably more. They're all uh, heavily armed, lots of drugs, and uh, heavily barricaded. The front door has three cages on it, so that's very fortified. You can't go through the front door. You get through three cages here, you have another fortified door here. It's, it's going to take a lot of coordination to get this right, but I feel pretty confident that we can do it. It looks fairly harmless on the outside, but trust me, I've seen the pictures on the inside. This is going to be the Baker side, the alpha window here. This is where we're pulling from for the primary pool because the APC2 will cut across this open field. This vacant lot here towards the target location. At the same time, APC1 will be moving up to the alpha side of the house. Uh, once we get in position up here, we have a, a strap set up to do a pull. Fortified basically means that they've set up the structure and, and built up the doors with bars, with uh, mesh, uh, basically welded in a, a fort. Uh, they've done everything but dig a moat around the place. So, uh, in an attempt to keep us out. What we see, we can defeat from what we've got already. If there's an unexpected in there, like they've gone back and put a big mesh cage up on the outside that comes off about a foot, then we have a secondary harpoon pull that we're ready to come back and reset. So what we're going to initially do is do the original pull with the bar. I feel pretty confident that window pull will get us inside the structure. I think so. OK. This is going to test our skill. We are going to do a pull with this tool that Todd Stratman made. Stratman's pull tools are tools that we use to pull off front doors and front windows. And they're attached to straps that are attached to the armored personnel carrier. And when the armored personnel carrier takes off, so do the window and the door. We're going to use this armored personnel carrier to ram the gate down, hook up to a barricaded window, pull the window out.
the main reason that we attack any objective from several different angles like we are on this and several different points is to overwhelm everybody inside. We figure if we keep them rocked back on their heels and keep them overwhelmed, they can't formulate a plan. If they can't formulate a plan, they can't take aggressive actions towards us. And that's what we prefer. Auto pound, just give us a holler when you roll. And four from here, it'll be about one minute out. All operations are dangerous. This one, just the amount of crack that was taken out of here last time, the amount of money, the amount of weapons taken out of here, the risk factor is high. Well, we unload, unload. They have no idea what's about to come down on top of their head. Before you hit that fence, you need to pause a half a second, let us bail off and get behind you. Looks like it's shut. Go walk. Gates open. Gates open. That's probably about it. You guys. Get the chain. That's probably about it. Right. Police! Police! We need more! We need more! Get that dog out of the way! Did you break a rake? Come on! Hit it! Back up and hit it! Back it up! Hit it again! Hit it again! Hit it! Hit it! Hit it! Go! That's oh, as good as it gets. Hold it right there. Hold it. Don't back up. Give me the strap. Hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it. Hit it, hit it, hit it. Hit it, hit it, hit it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Everybody hold. Everybody hold. We got unsecured. Let those hands touch that wall. Back away, sir. We're good. I want to walk it. Walking, guys. I got any weapons on you? All right, let me know now. Okay. Do you have weapon on you? Okay. One walk. Uh, in my room, uh, the two rooms I searched, there was nobody in it. I think Johnny and a couple of the guys went into uh, their second room there, and that's where everybody was, laid out. We'll go around and take a look at the back side. Our uh, APC couldn't get through the fence. That was the one thing that had to happen for the operation on the B side to go well. The winch popped open and grabbed the fence. So when we backed up to try to get some speed up, it held him. So we had, we had nothing. So fortunately, they got through on the front right there through that big window. And they didn't have to worry about us. You know who the luckiest dog here is? Was it that black dog? Yeah, yeah we would have killed it. His chain was wrapped up in the strap. I sat there and looked at that dog, and I go, that's one dead dog right now. He's really? Lucky. He's lucky that the whole thing didn't come out. Killed him. Come here, boy. Oh, what a little fatty. Oh. Little crack dog. <laughs> What'd y'all get out of there? A little bit of weed. A little bit? Found marijuana crack, just like last time. There's that shotgun. And a bunch That's of 223 ammo. Well, not a, maybe like 50 rounds in there. Heavily armed, heavily barricaded, heavily loaded up on cash and drugs. Well, they're basically fortified for one reason, to keep us out. And we take offense to that. We try to neutralize the structure. We'll tear down all the fortifications and the barricades, not only for our safety, but for the, the neighborhood's safety. They want these crack dealers out of here. They don't want them up and dealing you know, the next day in a highly fortified structure. We, we should be able to pull that out. All right, we'll do that. I think they're, they're going to want us to do it after they sit That's secured. Fine. We need to remove this fortification. And uh, I believe we've got the court order to do that. We need to clear the house, though, Andre. 
Go ahead and clear the house. All right, Bob, pull up the slack a little bit. All right, pull back the slack. Clear, clear, clear. pull. It's, it's urban renewal. Um, we're trying to uh, beautify the neighborhood. I'd say that's a job well done. There it is, job. It's a job. Cool. Today we're going up to uh, Classic Aviation up in Addison for our first flight lesson. What's racing through my mind right now is how lost we're going to get later on today. <laughs> and why do you think that? Because you can't find your way around when we're on the ground. Rich and I love the things we do together. We do nothing but make each other laugh. Why don't you wear lifts? Because I'm six feet tall and you're a carniac freak show that I happen to like. I've never had that in a relationship before. Dressed up to go flying? No, you sure didn't. Janine, this is Heather. Hi, Heather. Hi, Janine. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Good to see you again. Good to see you. So, what we're going to be doing today is normal landings, normal takeoffs. Just kind of get your feet wet and see what you think about the whole thing. We don't get a lot of time to ourselves between jobs and kids. So this is something fun that we're doing just for us. You all right? You're nervous, aren't you? I thought it would be bigger. <laughs> this is... Right here. Okay. All right, circuit breakers are all in. Hash mark, catch the line again, and taxi over to the hold short line. Clear for takeoff, 686. Full power, right rudder. Just give it just slight back pressure, and it should fly right off. Level off, there you go. You have some Timberland? Yes. Kind of a stud. Are you single, it Captain? Yes, I'm single. Really? Are you looking for a co pilot? Yeah. Nice and easy. Okay, I'm pulling the power back. All right. Thank you, guys. No problem. It's fine. So we're going to do basically what we did with Rich. We're going to go out to the north, do some turns and stuff, and then head back in. Everybody has their comfort zone, and I'm taking her way out of her salon comfort zone. We're just going to fly to the edge of the lake. Now we're going into an environment that she knows very little about. So I think that's causing her some apprehension. You're doing fine. It's, you flying is easy. As far as the flying lessons go, we're in it together. I mean, you have to be for the long haul to get your license. It's not something you do overnight. You know what I need to get you is a logbook. She needs a logbook, yes! doesn't she? Yes! We have to, have to put today's flight in there. Which, um, which one do you want? All of them work. This one? Yes. There's one that's three times this amount if you'd like to get it. Oh, where is it? <laughs> now, she's real hesitant on different things, you know, personal relationships. She's just real leery. I just like our relationship and things the way they are. And we have a lot of fun and there's something that back my mind that worries me that if we were to take it a step further, it might change. And I don't want anything to change. You're legal. Congratulations. <laughs> you had a great first flight. You ready to go?
We're going to a house that's been donated to us, basically, to do some training with our new guys. Basically, you're going to, you're going to slam deep here through the window. Uh, we so use break and rake techniques, way. report and cover techniques. We'll smash a window out, rake out the curtains or the blinds, and put guns in that way. With an assaulter, breacher, assaulter, you guys will split the door. He'll breach if he has to. If not, then you step aside, let him go in. You guys go and take care of the problem, OK? We train our guys to react effectively to the unexpected. And by doing so, then they can control their fear of the unknown. Steve. Good. All right, I'm on my way. Bye. We're running a narcotic warrant on a house. It's kind of a short notice thing. Narcotics generally handles most of their warrants. It's one of those things where they're not real sure about the interior of it or don't have the intel or just don't have the manpower to hit it right now, then they'll give us a call. We don't have a lot of good intel on this one, so a lot of our tactics will be reactionary. What I'm concerned with is splitting the teams up and delaying. I think it's going to be congested up there, and I'd, I'd rather just flow through there dynamically if we could. Yeah, I haven't been in narcotics. It, it helps me on these type of warrants because I've spent time in these crack houses with these crackheads, you know? I know what they're thinking and what they're doing. They're all pretty much the same, every crack house, so. Just little operations in a, in a house they probably inherited from grandma. Narcotics sometimes calls us when they don't have a lot of information on the interior of a place. We might get bogged down on this warrant. We might try a breach and it fails, and we might try an alternate breach and that fails. Now we've got a barricaded person. Left turn or right turn? Left turn. Three seconds. We're looking for bodies and weapons. We're not looking for drugs as SWAT guys. We leave that to the narcotics guys. It's in the bed. I got it. They have it. Good. One walking. One walking. We end up finding uh, one guy in the middle room on the left-hand side. He's the guy that actually lives here. The information we had on this one was that the dealer would have the buyers come in. He'd stage them in the front room of the house, then he'd leave and go to the back side of the house where he'd get the dope and bring it back to me. We're currently searching all the outbuildings out back. Uh, the shed and the garage have been searched. They haven't found anything inside yet. Have you boys found anything yet? No, sir. Our suspect on our warrant leaves the drug buyers up front, and then he goes somewhere else to get the dope. You know what you did? Let me tell you what you did. They went in the house, you let them in, you left out of the house. And you went and got the dope and came back in. Supply doesn't create demand. Demand creates supply. Our job is to make the neighborhood safer. And we do it one house at a time, one neighborhood at a time. We're taking these young men on an adventure of a lifetime. I'm rock climbing today with my two sons, Matt, who is 15, and Nick, who is 11. I gave Matt the choice of what he wanted to do for his birthday, and he said he wanted to grab some guys and, and go uh, rock climbing, repelling him. You know, being the devoted dad that I am, we're making that happen. Mineral Wells State Park is where we're going. It's got a lake, 
in a great ravine that's known for rock climbing, camping, and stuff like that. We passed two good restaurants. What we're basically going to do with the boys today is we're going to put them in situations and scenarios where we're going to challenge their ability to handle fear. It's life's lessons that we're teaching them here today. Go ahead and put those on. You guys check each other's gear, save your gloves, and I'm going to go up and string a line real quick. I love rock climbing. I did ask for this for my birthday, and I usually ask for it every year. Actually, it should be off to the side a little bit. Right. Yeah, like that. There you go. That's good. Dad. Yeah, bud. You know, sometimes I'm hydrophobic. You're hydrophobic? I don't think that's what that's called. But I what is it called? I understand what you're trying to say. A lot of the techniques we'll use today is stuff that I learned from SWAT, and we use them in SWAT. Oh, pull a slack, Steve. One of the biggest mistakes that we make is that we don't push our kids and show them what their potential is. Huh? You know, every now and again, you've got to put them in those kind of extreme situations where they know that, that they can overcome any challenge and they don't have any limitations. It's good that you're scared because scared keeps you smart. But what I want you to do is I'm, we're going to only go as fast as you want to go, OK? And I'm going to show you how not to be scared. All right, I'm going to go with you if you want, all right? No way. I will if you want me to. OK, hook that up. Anytime you want to take that hand off, you can. You put you can put that hand on the rocks. That'll help you. I'm scared. I know it, and I'm here to help you. Okay. Lean back. Try and find the ledge. So you're doing all the good right now. Is the toughest part because you're you're taking off and you're doing good. The main reason for this is to build confidence in the kids, and you you gotta keep reassuring them that you're there for them. And I think that's kind of the secret to parenthood, anyway. Is just reassuring the kids that you, they're gonna they're gonna stumble, they're gonna fall, but you're always there to help pick them up. You know what, I've got more respect for the ones that overcome their fear and do it than I do for the ones that have no fear and, and do it. I've always heard that's a measure of a hero. Good job, Nick. Well, we're gonna do the okay. ridge thing, and that's gonna be What's the ridge thing? It's where we go, like, say there's like one right there and one right there, there's gonna be a rope. In the oh, yeah, yeah, I've never done that before, so we'll all be on the same boat. <laughs> okay. We're gonna see if we can't get the kids from that ridge to the, this ridge over a line that we're gonna string between tree to tree. It's something that we do at work, going from building top to building top, basically what the exercise is. See if we can't recreate it here for the kids. At first, that'd be a cool wall to do. <laughs> My turn. Yep. Now, so you gotta pull hard. Pull hard. You gotta pull hard. My philosophy is if you can teach kids early to to control their fears in a structured environment, then when they get in an unstructured environment and and fear strikes, and they can handle themselves more. Oh, you're going back. Oh boy. What it's really cool having a dad in the SWAT. I mean, everybody thinks that's really neat, and everybody knows that. And he's like, hey, look at that kid. His dad's a SWAT officer. <laughs> my kids love everything that there is about my job. They love the guns. They love the, the rappelling and the climbing. And I'm going to kind of direct them for something bigger and better. You know, I keep my fingers crossed that my kids want to be the doctor, the lawyer, the premier jobs in society, even though the job I, I have, I love, because every parent wants their kids to have a better life than what they had. I want to thank all you guys for not dying this morning. I've always said that we don't raise sons, we, we make men. And I think this will impact each one of these kids in a positive way. A toast. Come back. Yes. <laughs> Empty water bottle. I'm awesome. Empty water bottle. Uh -huh. uh. Narcotics called us and asked us to execute a warrant. The primary entry point is going to be a triple pull. We're going to pull the front door, the front window, and a side window. And the side window is coming out because this porch looks kind of weak. So if the porch comes down, we're going to have a uh, secondary entry point right on the left-hand side of the house. The triple pull, it's, it's extremely dynamic. It'll be aggressive and, quite frankly, violent. If, uh, if the patio collapses and we can't get in, our alternate entry point will be this B4 window. We'll gear up and uh, hit the target location. You gonna be here? Oh, you gonna go in your car? Gotta be slamming. Slamming is, is the toughest job. It's uh, you're the key holder. Oh, 
The main thing on the pool is getting everybody out of the way. When those bars come off, they're lethal, and they're going across the uh, front yard and into the street, and anything they hit, they're going to tear up or kill. I'd almost rather sit back and watch this one because it's going to be pretty dynamic. Secure the back. These pools and this, this violence of action is saving lives, their lives and our lives. Because you don't think to go to guns when something like that happens. You, you think about hitting deck, and it buys us about 10 seconds to get in there on top of you and bring you into custody. 30 seconds. Watch the wires. 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 Watch the we got one walking. Three uh, suspects with uh, one had a knife in their hand. Things don't always go as planned. That's why we always have a backup plan. We had to hook a ladder into the alternate entry point because we thought a weak structure like this, this could possibly happen. And we talked about it in the briefing Watch about the porch coming down, and it did. I swear it was down when we got here. First rate work, overdone as usual. Well, if it's worth doing, it's worth overdoing. Over yes. Woo! Look at this house. Look at this. I don't like the gratuitous destruction of anybody's property, but you know, don't don't be a dope dealer and don't barricade your house, and you won't have that problem. It's it's simple as that. You know, it's like our chief said. Glad I'm not a dope dealer in Dallas. Pick it by what color it is, or the color you know, matters. Like, figured. Color matters. Not radio stack or what it can do. No, that you can figure all that out. Hey, Rodney. Hey, Rick. How are you going? It's good Hi. to see you. Hey, Janine. How are you this morning? I am great. Janine and I have had a few flight lessons, and uh, we decided that we want to get our own airplane. So she has a friend, Rodney, that yeah, is gonna. Cool introduces to a broker that has a couple airplanes. Right now, we're just trying to get a feel for what kind of plane would work for both of us. And, and actually, it's more economical when you consider getting all your ratings and everything. Instead of renting, it's better to have your own airplane. Hi. Stay up on. Hi. Stay on. Hi. I'm Janine Nice Keith. to meet you. Rich nice Amberlin. Rich, nice, nice to meet you. you. Glad y'all came by to look at my airplane. It's beautiful. I take it this is it? This is it. Guys, this is a Piper Cheyenne 2. It's a twin engine turboprop. It has seven seats in it. I'm looking for a plane that's big enough just to haul all of us around. Together, we have four kids and us. Just going to show you the best part about the airplane for you. Hey, here's your seat. The bathroom. Honey, if you're having a rough one, you can just buckle yourself in. If it's rough back there, then 
you're not flying the plane correctly. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. And then the rest is everything else you have except for the. There's a whole lot more buttons on this plane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, their their plane like this is going to be quite a bit different than what what y'all are used to. I think it's beautiful. And it's painted in the Dallas Cowboy colors, so you can't go wrong there. Doesn't get any better than that. No. Boy. I think it would uh, be perfect, except for we can't fly a twin engine plane just yet. <laughs> if you could have your dream plane, this one, you know. These are big money airplanes, though. These airplanes are uh, between five hundred and seven hundred thousand dollars. He's talking about an airplane that's half a million dollars. That's a big investment. That's beautiful. Well, you do Ultimately, this is what we're looking for, which is why we're looking at it today, so that we can take all the kids. It's something that we can both fly together, and it's pretty. <laughs> she wants to buy an airplane together, and that's probably her way of committing to me and me committing to her without having to say the M word. Painted in the cowboy colors, are you kidding me? I think there's a certain implication of a commitment when you buy something together like this. Janine, will you go to lunch with me? I'd love to. <laughs> I'm starving. You see her heart jump? She thought it was on there for just a second. Both of us have been so banged up by marriage that what's the rush? Can we go eat? Yeah. I certainly hope we stay together, and if that means marriage, in the end, I, I hope it means that.